Bonjour, bienvenue à Bibartos. Je m'appelle Kaustub, uh, j'habite à Paris, I live in Paris, and I'm a French uh, teacher, so I'm a principal instructor at Bibartos. And uh, we are going to talk about, like we have spoken many times before, role of French in Canadian immigration. That is our topic of discussion for this webinar. All right, so let's get started. Can anybody tell me from the audience why is it a safe strategy to learn French if you are looking for Canadian immigration? You know, over the years, IRCC has undertaken, the agency, Immigration Agency for Canada has undertaken a lot of changes. They have changed some strategies. The frequency of draw has, you know, altered between two draws a month to, you know, no draws for two months and then many such minor major changes have happened but despite considering all that why should we invest in french language when it comes to immigration to canada can we rely on this medium or pathway to reach our immigration objective first and foremost you must understand a little bit about geopolitic of canada right so quebec is a one large province of so basically canada as a territory was occupied by british and french at, during the period of history right and quebec which is a large province of rich and large province of canada was primarily a french colony that's why french is still the what you would say primary language in quebec montreal quebec city and especially outside the urban areas. Thus, if you know, English and French are two official languages of Canada, Canadian government. Official languages are two, English and French. Quebec had a, what you would say, has always had a separatist movement active in Quebec, like a political separatist movement, simply because of the language. Like they... They are of French origin or influenced by French. They want to preserve their culture, their language. So they wanted to stay away or separate from the majority English speaking rest of the Canada. Now to quell this separatist movement, it is important for Canada, a Canadian government located in Ottawa or those kind of centers in Ontario to promote French and to connect Quebec with rest of the Canada. And the only way they can connect Quebec with less rest of the Canada is by having more people to people movement or since Canada is heavily reliant on immigrants for their economic growth and for their survival. If they're going to admit a lot of immigrants, Quebec should not be left behind. Like you should not have a scenario where most of the high skilled immigrants are going to other regions of Canada like Ontario or British Columbia, but Quebec itself is not getting much benefit from this uh, immigration. That way, the gap between Quebec and other regions will further increase, leading to further sentiments of separatism. So it is extremely important for Canadian government to integrate Quebec more and more with the rest of the Canada. And if there are immigrants being accepted for economic reasons, Quebec should also benefit from this immigration. And the only way Quebec can benefit from this immigration is if these immigrants or some of these immigrants are francophone or they can speak and work in French. The requirement of French-speaking immigrants will always, always be there. As long as Quebec is a vital part of Canada, they will need French-speaking immigrants. Is, does that answer the first question? Like, why can we rely on French as a strategy or as a pathway for immigration to Canada? Despite all the ever-changing policies and draws of uh, you know, IRCC. Make sense? All right. In general, what was the cutoff of all program draws in 2023? If you guys are keeping a tab, CRS cutoff for all program draws. Generally, it has been around at least 480. I mean, they had conducted some draws of huge, like what you would say, in March 2023, they conducted three draws of 7,000 invitations. That's a lot of invitations. Like. 21,000 invitations in March 2023. Still, the cutoff was 481, 484, 490. So generally, the cutoffs are lingering around 500 CRS points for all program draws. Furthermore, Canada introduced this system of 
profession specific draws so now they also sometimes conduct draws where they invite immigrants from potential immigrants from certain professions so that is also one thing that came into the mix last year in the year 2023 the cutoffs were fairly high for all program draws i remember when i was trying for it back in uh, 2019 470 was a very good score where 470 almost meant that you were guaranteed an invitation but that is not the case uh, nowadays all right at the same time let me talk about the french specific draws that they have conducted since july 2023 you are aware that if you score clb7 that is b2 level intermediate levels uh, score in tef or tcf canada exam then you get around 62 extra series points 50 for um, proficiency like the intermediate proficiency and so we have various videos on youtube from bbarters which will explain to you the exact crs benefit but to keep it short if you get CLB 7, that is B2 level score in either TCF or TEF Canada, you get 62 extra CRS points benefit. Okay. Considering that the first draw that was conducted in July for French uh, stream, the minimum requirement for this draw is you have CLB 7, you have B2, minimum B2 level in all four aspects, all four skill sets, that is speaking, um, writing, listening, and reading. So they invited 2,300 people and the cutoff was 439. So when I say cutoff is 439, this includes the six, 62 extra points that you would get for CLB7. So if you remove 439 was the cutoff, but obviously to qualify for this, you would have CLB7 that would give you 62 extra CRS points. So how much is the actual CRS score before French? 39. Yeah, yeah. 377. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So in July 2023, while other all program people are trying to get to 480 and 490 and 500 to be safe, somebody who initially had a CRS profile of 370 or 380 because of French would get invited because first they would get 62 extra points for CLB7. And then because of this French specific draws, they don't have to compete with plethora of other people who do not speak French. This cutoff of French was in August, they had another draw. This time they only invited 800 people. So in, in July, the invitation of French specific draw was 2,300 2, people. In August, it was only 800 people. They only invited 800. Still the cutoff was 435, the cutoff reduced. It was 435 with French benefit. So again, we are talking about uh, for late four, 370s, if that was your original score. In September, they also conducted another French-specific draw where they invited only 500 people and the cutoff was 472. So if you remove the 62 points from French, people originally having scores 410 were also could also get invited because of French in this draw. And... Then again, in October, they converted, they conducted another French specific draw, but the invitations were 300 and this time the cutoff was 486. Still, if you remove 62, it's like 424, which is the, your original CRS without French. As you can see, the invitations have dropped as they conducted more and more French specific draws, the invitation number of invitations have dropped. Any idea? Yeah, that's pretty, probably would be the case, I would I would assume. So it is indeed pretty tough to find, uh, although there are lots of former French colonies in uh, yeah Northern Africa and uh, other, you know, regions around the world, but probably those people struggle in English. So another reason that those are not occupying all these invitations is that I have seen, obviously, I've worked with people from North Africa. They struggle a lot in English. So probably they are not also qualifying for this thing or they have other inhibitions. So the reason that I compared these draws was one more time to tell you that going into 2024, if Canadian op immigration remains your objective, it is quite a bankable strategy to learn French and get this 62 extra CRS point. Not only you could get invited in the main all program draws, 
because of this uh, CRS benefit, but obviously they are going to continue to conduct French specific draws. And that could obviously mean that even if you are lingering in your CRS profile around 410, I don't know, 400, even then you have a good chance of getting invited because of French. So that's a long sort of like discussion on, you know, relying on French for as a means or pathway for immigration to Canada. At B Barters, we have been working since last three years, more than that, actually, uh, three and a half years in this particular field of training adults to prepare for TEF and TCF Canada exam. If you can visit our website, you'll get all the information about our courses. Our programs are specifically designed to teach you the French that you need to clear these ex exams, first and foremost. That's the principal objective. Having said that, we have always maintained the fact that when you decide to learn French for even for Canadian immigration, you should always keep something in mind that the benefits of learning French, actually learning French, not just from exam perspective or just to, if you are actually able to speak, listen or like understand, comprehend, write in French, the benefits outweigh far more than just getting Canadian immigration or Canadian permanent residence. The benefits are much, much higher and they will be there throughout your life if you, if you pursue this uh, challenge of learning French. We have had some sessions on this topic at Bibartas and I, if you visit our YouTube channel, it's the name is same, Bibartas, you will find some sessions where certain people from France, where I work, have come in as guest speakers and they have spoken and explained to you what are some of the other benefits of learning French? So I often tell students that even though we respect your initial motivation or the primary reason to learn the language, if you actually end up learning the language by putting in a lot of efforts, there are so many hidden benefits that you might not be even aware of. Uh, and that also includes having a better career and better salary possibility in Canada. Even once you move to Canada, because you are going to compete with ton of people, newly arrived immigrants. So if you do speak French or you have knowledge of French, that's definitely going to put you ahead of the queue. So please visit our YouTube channel, Bibartas, and please uh, go through these videos where we talk about professional benefits of learning French and benefits of learning French outside Canadian immigration. You should be aware of this. Now, often, obviously, people... Uh, say that French is a difficult language to learn. Uh, well, <laughs> I'm not going to shy away from the fact that probably it is. Have you observed something which makes you believe that French is not so difficult to learn? Any reasons for that? I love this answer, Abhinav. I love this answer. Yes. Every time you feel like this is very difficult language to learn, Remember that millions of people across the world, across the continents are speaking it. So if, and many of them are not even half as educated as you are. So if they can, definitely you can. So that's a very good uh, way to look at it. Uh, another reason that I think I learned Spanish first, I mean, I learned English first. I'm, I'm, I'm from India, so English is not my mother tongue. So I learned English first, but we learn English throughout the school years, so. It's, it's a process of many years, but nonetheless, so English first, I had a good foundation in English. Then I learned Spanish and then I learned Spanish for two years and then practice it for one more year. So let's say three years in total. And then I moved to French. So what I realized is that, of course, knowledge of Spanish helped me a bit. Um, but more importantly, there are many similarities between English and French. That's just the fact. I mean, that's something that is extremely useful, actually. Some words I'm going to speak in English and you can tell me or guess or if you know, just tell me what is it in French. Okay, so I'm going to give English or tell me in French. Absence. Absence in English in French is? Absence. Same spelling, by the way. Then uh, capital. Capital in English, French is? Capital. Same, same spelling. Decision in English. What is in French? Just slight accent, decision, decision, very good. Emotion, yeah, emotion. Energy in French, anybody? Energy in French? Energy, 
same spelling with an accent so many basically impression is impression same spelling information is information same spelling invitation is invitation same spelling kilometer is kilometre just with a little bit accent and these are just some examples and then you also have somebody jenny on youtube pointed out that words with i o and ending are similar absolutely uh genil that is correct for example uh impression which is impression then information as we spoke then conversation which is conversation if i go on like this there will be hundreds and hundreds of words which are similar not only we talk about words but there are verbs you know the verbs to eat to sleep even verbs are very similar for example to accept is accepte then we have to capture is capture same spelling celebrate celebrate we have to destroy no no destroy is a little bit different communicate communicate uh, decide decide then uh, on, encourage onkohaje same spelling just a different uh, sound a little bit to identify identifier to justify justifie and so many of them actually to mention mentione to, to note note same to limit limite to uh, obtain obtenir similar uh, to validate validate so okay i can go on for half an hour more and i have practically seen this in france when i work here so if i'm speaking to a colleague or presenting something or participating in a meeting and i am not aware of certain verb in french i just think of the english verb and then i change the pattern to air like uh, you know décidé communiqué convertir convertir to convert so you just equipped with this knowledge once you spend enough time with french language you can really use this to your advantage you know similarities between english and french and it gets over the period of time it gets easier and easier just the initial you know initial few months 6 7 months are the tough period when you have to break into the language and realize that there are so many similar things between english and french once you get hang of the pronunciation then you can just read the same spelling which is a, like uh, information it's the same spelling but in french is information instead of information it's the same spelling so those things just take some time and but apart from that it gets easier and easier with time so french is not that difficult a language to learn as it is made out to be by by people on internet uh, so that is what my personal experience has been and hopefully if you guys spend enough time with the language that probably would be your experience too i with that i come to the next point of the webinar which is somebody asked on youtube right now in form the comment and question why be barters and i think that's a good uh, question to answer so be barters only started because i prepared like you for tef and tcf canada i only learned french to with an objective of immigrating to canada and i had a stringent you know what you would say timeline i had decided for myself that one year was the maximum i was willing to give it but my ideal timeline was 10 to 10 months that's what i was hoping for or targeting for and because i used my knowledge of spanish normal amount of time i used that and removed all the things in spanish which i did not use would which would consume more time and then just focused on the parts that i actually used in spanish in my day to day life in los angeles and thus i came to this conclusion that okay it is possible to do this in 10 to 12 months of course that sounds easier said than done you need to invest like you know almost 4 to 5 hours exclusively every day without failing to complete this journey uh, but my thing was the people the thing that people miss about my journey is that i was also interested in french for i don't know c'est une langue très belle à écouter i always say that it's a very beautiful language to listen to it sounds very nice and i don't know in, in the back of my mind it was always there that if i learn french and even if for some weird reason or whatever reason ircc doesn't end up inviting me to canada it could potentially open new doors french could open new doors in my career and eventually that's how it transpired long story short b barters was born out of this personal experience of preparing 
for these exams, learning French only for that. And eventually it was expanded to promote French also. So we come from love for French, but with a caveat that first and foremost, we want to help you to pass the exam. And then obviously we want to continue pressing that you can continue to learn French and you know eventually master it to benefit from the humongous opportunities it can open up for you in the, in the career pathways or even immigration to Europe for that matter. So it, we, we always follow student-centric approach because the initial courses were designed from a student perspective. I was not a master of French when I started teaching French. I had barely studied it for two years myself. I had not moved to France at that time. So they were designed from student perspective. So we do not come from, we did not start from this PhD angle or what you would say, I know everything about French angle. We came from student perspective. What does a student require to do bare minimum to pass the exam? That was our USP. And that's how it was appreciated by students. Despite like, there was no way that people trusted us. Despite the fact that we declared openly that we are not masters of French. We don't have a master's degree in French. We do not live in France at that time. And that still remains pretty much the biggest, uh, what you would say, USP, the best point about us, that our programs are student-centric or student-perspective-centric. Like, for example, my mother tongue is Marathi because I come from Maharashtra region of India. Probably somebody's mother tongue is Telugu or Tamil or, you know, I don't know, Urdu or Hindi perhaps. I will not be able to teach Marathi very well. I mean, not in a precise and concise manner. If you ask me to teach you Marathi in, I don't know, six months time, I don't think it's possible for me. Yeah, I mean, it's very difficult when you do not learn the language yourself as a student. Like our mother tongue, we do not learn it as a, as a student. We just acquire it over the years. So it's not easy for us to formulate and plan it and to teach it in a few months time. It's just impossible. Uh, so we mostly, if I start teaching my mother tongue, I'll say most of the time, somebody asks me why it is like this. I don't know. It is like this. I just learned it like that from right from the childhood. So many times, that's why I always tell people that if you're looking for a good French teacher, it's not essentially doesn't have to be a native speaker or it doesn't essentially have to be somebody who has done PhD in French because probably they will bring a lot of baggage. They will bring a lot of things which are probably not necessary at this point of time. So, as I said, just to again conclude this point, as somebody asked on YouTube comment, we have designed our courses from student perspective, first and foremost. We do not want to proclaim it as PhD of French or master's in French because that's not required to pass the exam. As only yesterday I was conducting a session and we were discussing the topic of uh, future sample and uh, present conditional tense. And a student uh, asked me, yeah, but there are like six, seven usages of future sample. I'm confused. How will I remember all these different scenarios of usages? I said, yeah, but immediately in your question is your answer. You should not try to master all six usages of future sampler. Just focus on the primary use. What is the primary use? Maybe one secondary use, like, a, you know, some expression. That's it. That's the thing that you focus on in the first, first iteration. You master that, you start using that. And then later onwards in revisions, further revisions, if you can acquire a couple of more usages at all, trebia. If not, let's let's see. That's how we prepared ourselves when we gave the exams. You can't master the language in one year at all. That's not possible. Sepa possible. Desole. Sila vehite. It's the truth. You cannot master the language in one year, especially a foreign language like French. What you can do is you can optimize your preparation and you can use it in a, at an intermediate level and you can definitely pass these exams, TEF and TCF Canada. So that is the USP, I would say, of BBATOS that we are acutely aware of this. And we don't come with this baggage of, you know, we are the PhD holders in French or we are the native speakers. So although we have native speakers of French helping us in, you know, designing the uh, lectures or they always monitor our sessions and they give us feedback, but that's not the, what you would say, that's not the focus point. Focus point is student perspective and what is important for students uh, in, in terms of exams. Feel free to visit our website and explore our programs.
Merci beaucoup for joining today for this webinar. I hope you got some information about role of French in Canadian immigration and other benefits of learning French. And probably French is not that difficult a language to learn as it is made out to be at times. Encore une fois, je vous remercie pour uh, votre participation. And uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing you in our programs in near future. And uh, we would be happy to help you with uh, this beautiful language. Comme je vous ai dit. C'est ça. Alors, merci beaucoup encore une fois. Et au revoir. Bonne soirée.